Robbie, and we are from Art for Relaxation Therapy, or ART, and today we are going to be learning about Keith Haring. So just as a quick introduction, yes, my name is Avalon, my pronouns are she, they, and um, I am 18 and I just graduated high school. My favorite thing to draw uh, is people. I love uh, painting and drawing portraits, and my favorite artist is Yayoi Kusama. Hello, my name is Ravi Patel. I also am 18 and I just graduated high school. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, and I think my favorite thing to draw is probably just little doodles on the side of my paperwork. Nice, awesome. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to share a presentation about Keith Haring, just a little info about him and fun facts. Uh, so let me share that now. So this is Keith Haring, the Radiant Baby. That is what one of his pieces or motifs he used in his artwork a lot was called. So let's get started. So who was Keith Haring? Keith Haring was born on May 4th, 1958 um, in Reading, Pennsylvania and was best known for his subway drawings and graffiti art in New York City uh, in the 1980s. Yes, uh, Keith's first introduction to art came from his father who drew cartoons and taught him different techniques of how to essentially create art. Awesome, yes. And Herring was influenced by Dr. Seuss, Walt Disney, and Charles M. Schultz and his Peanuts comic strip, which you can see at the bottom of the screen, um, going from left to right, you have Walt Dis or you have Dr. Seuss, Walt Disney, and then um, Schultz. Yeah, um, and not only did um, Keith Paint. He also did a lot of experimental works using collages, installations, and performance arts. Um, and so those range from, you know, big pieces that he would do on walls to sculptures and such. Um, but one of the biggest things that he is known for is spray paint and graffiti artwork. Uh, that was sort of the biggest impact that he had on sort of the art world. And he was very interested in sort of uh, the spontaneous nature and originality that he could achieve through graffiti art and the use of tags. Yes, definitely. And he noticed that one day um, that the ad boards in the subway in New York City were sometimes blank and were waiting for the next advert to be hung. This inspired him to use these blank canvases for his artwork. And in that way, um, he really saw the world as his canvas. Uh, he was always looking for somewhere to create an inspiration to strike and hence he began creating these subway drawings that were made primarily from chalk um, and he completed hundreds of these drawings between 1980 and 1985. Yeah and one of the parts of his artistic watching people's reactions to his artwork um, and a lot of his earlier works especially the subway art were uh, criticized because not a lot of people were uh, comfortable and were very confused by the fact that, you know, he was doing art in public spaces, but uh, he started to get better and different feedback as he uh, evolved through his different styles of artwork, and he used that to sort of help him become a better artist. Definitely. And that's so important to keep in mind for when we create our own art as well. Um, yes, and he was involved with numerous charities and causes particularly close to um, those that involve children. Yeah, he was very sort of connected to the art world and he wanted to sort of share it. And throughout his career, he wanted to, and he did devote a lot of his time to public works, which had different social messages. He wanted to convey ideas and emotions through his artworks. Uh, he produced more than 50 public artwork pieces between 1982 and 1989 in cities all over the world, many of which were created for charities and hospitals. Yes, and um, he expressed universal concepts in his work, which we'll see examples of in a couple slides. Um, and some that he explored were like birth, love, war, um, using heavy lines and a direct message. Uh, his artwork was withstanding and universal and accessible to um, everyone. And so um, now we are going to look at some of his work. So uh, we see here on the top left, you have that sort of very simple line work, just one color, and yet um, it's still a really interesting image and conveys um, a lot of uh, emotions and storylines. You see people dancing, you see a snake. 
Um, whereas then the one at the bottom right, you have more colors and more of a simple drawing. Um, this one, you can definitely tell they're dancing, right, Ravi? <laughs> Yeah, uh, they definitely look like they're having a good time and it's that's one of the things that was super prominent in a lot of his works is that you could sort of sense an emotion and even though it looked a little bit simplistic it sort of told a story through those line strokes and colors definitely and you can see him also um translating those 2d drawings and paintings into sculpture which you can see at the bottom um, middle piece uh, which is of a dog and you can see um, an image of the dog DJing on the next, uh, not the next slide, but the slide after. And yeah, those are some of his works. Here's some more of his works. You have uh, more of that uh, first piece that we looked at in the top left. And then you have him using primary colors, which are red, blue, and yellow in the top right, which um, those three colors are the basis, uh, basics of uh, the color wheel and other colors being made. Um, which you can check out a lesson on that on the Art Relaxation Therapy website, which we will link at the end of this video. And then the bottom uh, bottom left, you can see some more um, graffiti like work he did, uh, and then his famous heart piece with the two people. And then something at the bottom right, um, a more expressive face rather than just blank, um, like the people are in the pieces we've seen. You can see the eyes and the smile and um, still using that uh, very simple drawing, only two colors, but uh, really conveying a very strong emotion. And so about the project. Um, so today we are going to be thinking of a universal concept, or you can choose one below if um, you know any of them strike you as interesting, and create a piece in Herring style. So you can see the bottom sum that we have there is courage, family, innocence, pride, happiness, dance, uh, playtime, but you can really choose any of them. Um, I know for the drawings that we did with you guys uh, live, uh, I chose love and Ravi, what did you choose? I chose friendship. Yes. Um, and you can see um, even the piece here at the top uh, left really conveys say like family. And then you can see more examples here. Um, oh. And we have like friendship, love, world peace, play, silliness with that DJ dog I was talking about, um, liberty, family, or dance and joy. And really you can combine um, as many as you'd like, uh, as many themes or universal concepts. Um, but just looking at his style, uh, things that, that he used uh, mainly in his pieces were stippling, which is that dot like pattern, um, and uh, flat tones, which are these, um, colors that you use, uh, you know, there's no shading or anything. And he uses a lot of very bright and colorful, um, you know, values in his work. So um, now what we're going to do is after you come up with your concept or you choose one of these or one um, in this list here, uh, you can start creating. And um, here is a quick, actually quick picture of Keith Haring in the subway. Um, during the beginning of his um, art career, um, really, you know, drawing one of those figures with a heart for a head. Um, and Valentine's Day is coming up, so <laughs> that's actually very apropos. Actually, why don't we show our pieces that we did? I can show mine first. So this is, uh, I titled just mine, My Universal Concept, which is love. And um, it's a three panel thing. So if you want to do more of a narrative than rather just one piece, um, you can definitely do that as well. So it just starts with two people and then hugging and then their hug turns into a heart. Um, so I used watercolor for the background and for the rainbow. Um, and then I use the markers that you will have in your art pack um, right there for the people and the heart. And then I just used a black pen uh, to outline the figures, the heart, the rainbow and the panels, which are the squares. And here is mine. I have titled it The Power of Friendship. And it is, it's really just a, a whole bunch of people and a little figures. They're all sort of differently colored and they're all sort of having a grand old time at school. And it's sort of, I think what I wanted to go with was the fact that together, you know, friends can sort of have a very special connection and they can, um, they can do some amazing things. Yeah. Most certainly. Awesome, and now before we go, so now I'm going to show you how to do a quick demo um, of how to draw these figures uh, if you end up having a little bit of trouble. Um, what you can start with is you can start with your pencil 
um, a, uh, you can start with a little circle and just draw it in lightly. Um, and then you can see that their shoulders, they have like more uh, straight shoulders. Um, you can do this. I made mine a little bit curved in my piece, but um, you can definitely um, alter it however you like. And then their hands are more circular at the bottom. Um, and you can really pose them anyway because it's such a simple shape and they have more of a round body. Uh, so here we go. And then say like their little legs um, like this. And then you can take your eraser, your pink pearl eraser, if you want to make it a little bit lighter before you go over it with pen so it doesn't um, bleed uh, or smudge. So you can do that. And then let's say I want to make the person red. I can now outline. There we go. And you can either use um, watercolors or um, pen to fill that in. I know I use pen in mine, but, um, and Robbie used color pencil, um, but there were other uh, patients and artists at Chalk who were using um, their watercolors, which is also a great idea. So just for the sake of that, I'm going to do a quick watercolor over it. I'm just gonna do red like this here. And you can just, if you want some more tips on how to use watercolors, there's a video on Art's website, again, that I will link at the end of this video. And you can check out different watercolor techniques, which you should all have a watercolor set in your art packs. So here we have it all filled in. Just get that last arm. And there you go. And um, you can make the outline any color you like. I just made it red to match the inside, but I know Keith Haring mainly made his black as the outline. And then it's always fun to add a little bit of those um, motion lines like that, like the hands are moving and you can sort of highlight the person's face with those little idea lines sort of like that. Um, and yes, and as for that, I think that's, about it on how to draw the figures. And for the panels, it's just simple squares and then drawing inside. They um, can be whatever size you like, big or small. And awesome, that's about it for um, these, uh, this Keith Haring video. And, um, oh, let me go to here, awesome. And yeah, while you're creating, just make sure that you have a lot of fun. It's supposed to be relaxing. And um, we even had a, um, artist that was working with us through chalk, Damien, who said that it's just important to have fun. And I think that really rings true. And Ravi will agree that um, really art relaxation therapy and art in general is supposed to be a very positive, fun experience. And really just to get you thinking and get your creative juices flowing um, and get you to use art as an emotional and artistic outlet. Ravi, do you have anything you'd like to say before we go? Um, I just, I wish all of you guys immense joy in creating. I know art can bring a lot of joy to you, and I just hope that you guys can all have as much fun creating your own masterpieces as we did with this. Yes, awesome. And um, please share your pieces um, with the hashtag if you or your guardian has an Instagram um, with art relaxation therapy, uh, that will be, and we will, um, show the hashtag right now. I will put it on the screen. Um, hashtag art for relaxation therapy. Um, and yes, so awesome. This has been a great lesson. I hope you all enjoy. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out through our Instagram um, or our website. Awesome. Well, have a great day and have fun creating. Bye. Bye.